Otoscopic bilateral pelvic lymphadenectomy for external iliac and obturator ovarian cancer recurrences extending to the inguinal lymph nodes. 47 years old woman with previous diagnosis of borderline ovarian tumor who have had simple hist and bilateral salpingophorectomy a year ago and was referred due to the increased bilateral pelvic and inguinal lymph node metastasis diagnosed by CA125 and PET-CT and confirmed by inguinal biopsy. The patient is placed in a low lithotomy position with a steep Trendelenburg. The surgeon is placed in the left side of the patient and the first assistant in the right side. A second assistant is placed between the legs. As soon as the peritoneal cavity is inspected, it's possible to identify a large bulky lymph node recurrence over the external iliac vessels. This lesion presents an extension to the inguinal canal. The surface of the peritoneal cavity is adhered to the tumor, and the external iliac vessels run underneath the lesion. The lateral limit is the genitofemoral nerve, and you can see in this site the external iliac artery in red. At this point, the right round ligament is identified and its relation to the tumor. And the distal limit of dissection is established. The right ureter is in the left side of the screen and the proximal limit of the pelvic dissection is established. At this level, the right common iliac vein is identified and preserved. After establishing the anatomical landmarks, the external iliac vessels lymphadenectomy is then performed. The application of divergent forces is a very useful tool for this step. The obturator nerve is identified and preserved and the lymphovascular tissue around the obturator fossa is then extracted. In this picture, the tumor is identified and the landmarks are rounded in the obturator fossa. This is a partial view of the obturator fossa after the dissection. The remaining tumor in the distal side of the external iliac vessels should be addressed right now. The right genitofemoral nerve is compromised by the lesion and its distal port was resected and blocked. The deep circumflex artery and vein are well observed. As the tumor is firmly adhered to the external iliac vein surface, it's paramount to perform a very careful dissection in this plane. A combination of energy sources is very interesting in this setting. As the inferior epigastric artery is compromised by the tumor, it's identified, dissected, sealed and cut ligated. And this is the distal limit of the pelvic dissection. This is the final aspect of the right distal limit. The right inguinal ligament and the lacunar ligament are painted in white, while the pectin line is painted in gray. Along with the femoral vein, they form the femoral ring. The specimen is placed inside an endobag for extraction. Hemostasis is then reviewed, including the periosteum. And this is the final view of the right side dissection. In 
the left side, a large lesion is observed compromising the obturator fossa and with extension into the femoral ring. And in this image, it's possible to observe the tumor and its relation with the paravesco space and the external iliac vein. The tumor is firmly adhered to the psoas muscle and to the pelvic rim. This level, the lesion enters the inguinal rim. The strategy is to dissect the lesion and to separate it from the inguinal portion. Some fibers from the psoas muscle are dissected and resected. And some portions of the lesions are adhered to the pubic bone as well. With the ultrasonic device, it's possible to dissect and resect the superficial portion of the periosteum. This is the lateral limit with the pelvic rim, the psoas muscle, the external iliac vein, and the tumor. The tumor was also firmly adhered to the obturator nerve. At this point, the tactic was to preserve the nerve and to perform a shaving of the lesion. Approximately 1.5 centimeters of the tumor was adhered to the nerve. At the end of this dissection, it's possible to see the nerve adequately preserved. The resection included the obturator vessels. The specimen was also placed inside an endobag for extraction. And this is the final view of the left side. The ischium, the ilium, and the pubic bone are seen. The review of the hemostasis included the raw surface of the pubic bone. The distal and inguinal part of the tumors were dissected and resected through an inguinal incision. Total surgical time with laparoscopy was 2 hours and 13 minutes. Bleeding was estimated in 30 cc's and without transoperative complications. The patient was discharged next morning. As postoperative complications, she presented a right inguinal cellulitis and a left inguinal seroma. The final pathology revealed two positive lymph nodes out of nine in the left side and four positive lymph nodes out of ten in the right side.